rain go away. Actually, it is going to go away. In fact, we have a pretty nice day coming our way for tomorrow. But the next rain chance comes in, comes in this weekend. We'll talk about that straight ahead. All right, Paul, also first at four, COVID cases up again. We've got the new numbers. The city of Detroit issuing a new face mask recommendation. We'll have the latest. Here's Paula. Huge. This is absolutely huge. A ruling that puts female professional athletes on the same plane in terms of salary as males. We talk to the future. They're excited about this. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Devin Skillian in for Karen. First at 4, perhaps you're dodging raindrops, maybe slowing your uh, ride home down a bit. It's been a gray and rainy day, uh, certainly here in downtown Detroit. Uh, the radar shows the rain's going to stick around for a few hours. Meteorologist Paul Gross on duty here. Paul? Well, hey there, Dev. And you know what? You can't, actually can't dodge the drops. It's raining everywhere. I mean, it top to bottom, east to west. It's raining everywhere. And we'll show you more about what's happening to the west and how this is going to come to an end coming up in just a little bit. But right now, if you're heading out the door, you'll need the umbrellas. And it's kind of cool out there, relatively speaking, to where we've been. And also for this time of year, look at this. Temps only in the low to mid 50s right now. Fortunately, the wind is relatively light, so that's not a problem. But low 50s? Hmm, I think we're gonna have to do something about that and actually we will, but not this evening. This evening we're gonna see temperatures holding pretty much steady in the low to mid 50s and that will continue actually through the night. The rain will be tapering down, but we have some interesting news in the forecast. Look at the temperature trend here. Oh, some 70s and 80s, but then we're going back down. The question is, will we be able to enjoy any of this? I'll be back with that forecast coming up in just a bit, Devin. All right, Paul. Well, investors have that sinking feeling again as the Dow Jones takes a tumble. Target and other major retailers missing their earnings projections. That fueled fears inflation could cut into corporate profits. And right now you can see uh, the big board off over a thousand points on the day, down about three and a half percent of its value as the markets close. Sell off erased the gains from a really solid rally that we saw yesterday. All right, let's turn our attention now to the latest COVID-19 numbers from Michigan and a new mask recommendation. A lot of folks still trying to get our lives back to normal, but also now back in that high risk category for transmission. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom and KG looks like we could be seeing more face masks around the city of Detroit. Yeah, Devin, good afternoon. You're right. Today, the city of Detroit made it official. The city's health department sent us the notice just a few hours ago with an update on its face mask guidance. It's recommending people wear masks in indoor public settings or crowded spaces. It's also urging people to get vaccinated or boosted to avoid serious symptoms, hospitalization, or even death. In the past week, the deaths of 78 more people in Michigan have been linked to coronavirus. We've also seen more than 29,000 new cases. That number has quadrupled since the report on April 13th. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is monitoring the trends and has an important reminder. What we've been seeing really since March has been a steady, consistent increase in new cases. Now, keep in mind, though, these cases are currently an undercount with so many people doing home tests that go unreported. A more significant indicator at this point are hospitalizations, and there has been a steady increase in hospitalizations, which really goes with the fact that there are more cases. But it's not going up as sharply, and that's probably because of a combination of vaccinations, prior infections, and even medications like Paxlovid. Here's the problem, though. When you add all those factors together, it is now bad enough that we, again, need to protect ourselves in public. Back to you. Dr. McGeorge, we appreciate that very much. We'll see you tonight at 5. And, Devin, there's one more number we'd like to share. That seven-day positivity rate is now above 17%. And as Dr. McGeorge just pointed out, that, that doesn't include those unreported at-home COVID-19 test results. So keep all of that in mind, especially if you're in a high-risk category or you know somebody who is. All right, so that's all for now, Devin. Uh, we'll send it back to you, and we'll see you at 5. All right, KG, see you then. Sure. Well, today the Oakland County Sheriff's Office honored some of the first responders who raced to the scene of the Oxford High School shooting. Happened in Pontiac as part of the annual awards day ceremony. 45 federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies responded to the tragedy last November. Some of the first officers to arrive and help control the scene received special recognition. Sheriff Mike Bouchard says he is thankful for their efforts. We've seen similar tragedies around the world and around our country where people pause, people hesitate, and additional lives are lost. Tragically, we lost four amazing souls that day, but I am convinced that many more would have been lost 
without the amazing actions of the men and women of police and fire service on that day. Today's celebration is part of National Police Week and National Peace Officers Memorial Day. Have you received your auto insurance refund yet? Today, Governor Whitmer celebrating billions of dollars being returned to Michigan drivers. State's Department of Insurance and Financial Services says more than $3 billion has been refunded so far. If you had auto insurance in that designated time, you should have received $400 per vehicle. The money was due to you by May 9th, so that's nine days ago. If you've not yet received a refund, it's time to start checking into it. Call 313-ASK-DIFS. That's 833-ASK-DIFS, ask diffs. You can see that number again on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. We're staying on top of efforts to solve the national baby formula shortage too. Today we have the first reports of two children in Tennessee who suffered intestinal illnesses because they couldn't find the very specific formula they need. Yesterday, House Democrats proposed a $28 million emergency spending bill to try to help ease the problem, including more staffing for the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, but it's unclear if that bill can pass the House and Senate. Tonight at 5, help me Hank tackling some of the questions and some of the myths that have been going around about baby formula. Separate fact from fiction in our trust index coming up at 5 o'clock. The long battle for equal pay in U.S. soccer has come to an end and the women have won. Today, the U.S. Soccer Federation reached milestone agreements to pay the men's and women's team matching money. Federation just announced new collective bargaining agreements with unions for both teams. The women had sued the Federation but agreed to a settlement earlier this year that depended on those new labor contracts. As part of the deal, U.S. Soccer will also share part of its broadcast partner and sponsorship revenue. That adds up to a lot. It'll be a 50-50 split between men's and women's soccer. Paula Tutman looking at a reaction to this landmark agreement. Paula? You know, from a distance, you can hear the soccer balls being kicked. You might even hear some voices. But do you know if it's males or females playing? You probably don't until you actually look. These are athletes. They work their butts off. And now, and now, professional women athletes are starting to get recognition for the thing that matters most that says, hey, I value you. And that's your paycheck. Detroit is a sports town. Keep it right, keep it right. We have them all, including a professional men's soccer team and amateur women's soccer team, with an eye towards bringing a professional women's soccer franchise to Motown or Sports Town in 2023. It is a dream for Kayla Addy Addison, currently playing in the pre-professional league, Detroit City Football Club, or Detroit City FC. I can't stop playing. The love of the game and the, the urge to want to play and get on the field, it just hasn't gone away yet. Currently, when the women play at the arena in Hamtramck, the games are a sellout. We bring into this beautiful stadium like five to 6,000 people for both the men and the women's matches. A workout in the rain to these athletes really amounts to just, you know, playing the game, no matter the conditions. But the climate for pay just got a whole a whole lot better. I think for them it, it's, a, it's a statement. It's a, something they can look forward to now and say, hey, I'm a professional athlete and I'm making the money that I deserve. Shannon is a former pro player. Like many women, she went overseas to realize her dream. I played in Japan, Sweden, and Kazakhstan. But she still couldn't support a family if she needed to. Even today, female players are often subsidized to be able to afford to play the game they love. I do think these clubs, they do a very, very good job at being creative and kind of helping with, with meals or maybe it's a, um, a card to the local grocery store in addition to the salary. Uh, not, not quite enough to, to raise a family on. And now with a ruling of equitable pay for equitable play, it is a whole new ball game. Yes, they do see us, they recognize us, and we are here, and we do it just as good, or if not better, than the men. I think it's massive, and I think you'll see a lot more of how important it is down the road when more women get this opportunity to play pro. Our age, we might not reap all of those benefits, but we get to say, man, we were playing during this time, and we helped this happen, and look at where, you know, maybe our daughters our daughters get to have more than what we had. I mean, that's that's every parent's dream, right? Yeah, what Kayla said, they see us. Yes, indeed, a paycheck pays the bills. But for athletes, it's also an acknowledgement of value that they are also helping to grow the fan base, bring in sponsorships, as well as really, really performing very, very well 
on, an, an, on a national and global stage, Devin. And so right to recognize fighting for the next group, even if it doesn't necessarily help you in that moment. So important. Great point. Yeah. All right, Paula. Yep.